Hi, I'm Doug Wiley with Police Magazine. I'm here with Missy O'Lynn. You and I met a half dozen years ago. I invited myself ungraciously to one of your presentations because I wanted to hear you talk about um, the constitutional law crate. If you can begin to unpack that crate for us here today, that'd be great. Thanks, Doug. Well, first of all, it was a delight to have you in the class, so you were gracious. Um, the fact is, is that we expect so much of officers currently, you know, pure memorization of a multitude of concepts, and when we test them, either in the way they uh, write a report, give an interview, for example, in a homicide investigation or an internal affairs investigation, the way they testify, for example, in a prelim or in a deposition or ultimately in a courtroom, either for a criminal matter or for a civil matter, really is, in many respects, more important than what they actually did. Mm. In other words, their confidence that they are confident in how they articulate the choices they made and the reasons, the foundational understanding of the law, et cetera, is really important to that audience, whether it's a um, police executive, an investigator, mm -hmm. or ultimately a jury, for example, or the members of the public. Right. So um, one of the um, issues is, are officers able to recall, articulate, and implement what they have actually learned? And we give them so much material from their basic academy throughout their career mm -hmm. that we expect them to be able to put into action in split seconds that, you know, I think it's really important for them to be able to articulate their understanding of what's expected of them. And the Constitutional Law Crate is a, a tool that you can use to um, understand, you know, any use of force uh, instance, what you are allowed to do, what you're under policy. or what, Tell us how that works. So for adults to recall information, typically, um, it is significantly easier for them if it's um, information that's taught in chunks over longer periods of time, and they're able to do what's called self-assessment. In other words, they can test their own recollection. So I took that concept, having taken three bar exams, I'm licensed in Ohio, Texas, and California, I can teach you how to take a test. I took my understanding of how to study and, and recall information, and I put it into this, what turns out to be 11 flashcards assembled into a cube, or mm -hmm. as I call it, a crate, the bottom of the crate being the 12th side, which is just a label of the information. I took those 11 flashcards and developed the imperative information on a subject that officers need to be able to recall. So for example, in the constitutional law crate, the outside of the crate, the side panels, are the constitutional amendments that officers primarily need to be familiar with in particular. So in addition to that, the outside of the crate includes Graham versus Connor, which next year will be 30 years, the anniversary of 30 years of Graham versus Connor decisions in the United States following the United States Supreme Court's presidential decision on, on use of force and the Fourth Amendment. So the exterior panels of the crate, the constitutional law crate on the side, are the Fourth Amendment, which prohibits unreasonable searches and seizures of persons, places, and things. The 14th Amendment, which is the due process clause, and officers need to understand that the 14th Amendment prohibits anything that shocks the conscience, right. such as deliberate indifference to someone's medical care needs would be shocking. Right? Mm -hmm. and the Eighth Amendment if they happen to work in custody settings. And then Graham versus Connor, which is the law, according to the United States Supreme Court, that governs any seizure of a person under you know, a law enforcement officer's authority from the time we have like a consensual encounter mm -hmm. to an investigative detention to an arrest, even through the pretrial detainee phase. And what that means is until somebody is convicted of a crime in our country, then they fall under the Eighth Amendment cruel and unusual punishment standard. Mm -hmm. Until they are convicted, Graham versus Connor is the legal standard under federal law for judging whether an officer's use of force was appropriate. And that's the reasonableness standard. That's Correct. That's where the Chief Justice wrote that you're not allowed to judge a police officer's actions with 2020 hindsight. Correct. So you have to put yourself in the position knowing what the police officer knows at the time and having a similar amount of experience, correct? And so that is simply stated, by the way, and what I, what I um, am fond of articulating is called, we call it the force fraction, right? Mm. It's the eight magic words that is the answer to every use of force question you're ever going to be asked. It's the only tattoo, as I tease officers, that they're ever allowed to put on their body. I kind of mean that, even though it's, I'm joking, but I kind of mean it. So the force fraction is objectively reasonable under the totality of the circumstances. And right. what that looks like is 
OR with a fraction line above it, and then TOC. So you start at the bottom, objectively reasonable under the totality of the circumstances. And I'm gonna tell you, Doug, in defending officers for 33 years, creating that concept, that force fraction and the entire force equation has just been so gratifying with regard to how officers handle themselves in evaluating force incidents, making decisions out there in the field, and how they explain, articulate their legal burden, their you know the legal standard, and their actions. It is amazing when officers know the answer to yeah. the questions, how they can explain, because bottom line is, see, officers really truly know how to do their jobs. They're really damn good at doing their jobs, but typically they suck at telling their side right. of the story. Yeah. So that's the real issue, empowering officers with that confidence that they are competent. And when, they, when they're able to explain, you know, what's, when can I... When can I use force? I can use force when it's objectively reasonable under the totality of circumstances. Mm-hmm. When can you use deadly force? I can use deadly force when it's objectively reasonable under the totality of the circumstances. What's the law on use of force? What's your training on use of force? The answer is still the same, right. eight magic words. And in empowering officers, giving them that information not only gives them um, the ability to explain it, but when they're out there in the field, you know, there's, there's a couple of dangers. One is hesitation. Mm-hmm. Deadly right? hesitation. And the other is overreaction. And either one of those are bad, right. right? I mean, an officer hesitating because in this environment they're afraid of the legal consequences or the criticism of their choices or overreaction because they don't know the law and they're, they are afraid and they just don't do the right thing. Both of those are, are bad choices. And almost all the time our officers make good choices and I want them to be able to explain the choices that they make. The crate, the tattoo, these are great ways to remember that you have the confidence and the capability to articulate what you've done and why. And I really want to thank you for creating these things and the great training tools. Uh, you can go online and, and find uh, you can Google Missy O'Lynn and the Constitutional Law Crate and uh, find out more about it. I'm Doug Weiler with Police Magazine.